Straight Talk Africa, Democracy and the Rule of Law in Uganda. Are Ugandan citizens with inalienable rights or subjects granted with privileges by an individual authority? Who are the real primary stakeholders in Uganda? That's coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, August 31st. I am Shaka Sali. Well, hello to you, Shaka, and hello to all our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere. I'm Mariama Diallo, your social media reporter. Today, a report occurred on democracy and the rule of law in Uganda. Well, so much to cover in this hour. Coming up later in our STA inbox, we'll share your thoughts on our topic. That's through your emails, tweets, and Facebook comments. That's ahead on Straight Talk Africa. Hope you'll stay with us. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni won a disputed election earlier this year in which his main opponent says should be subjected to an independent audit. My colleague Paul Sisko has more on the story. Make no mistake, history is on the side. U.S. President Barack Obama, July 11, 2009. Africa doesn't need strong men. It needs strong institutions. Mr. Obama had a similar message for the African Union in 2015. It was the first ever address by an American president to the continental body. We all know what the ingredients of real democracy are. They include free and fair elections but also freedom of speech and the press, freedom of assembly. These rights are universal. They're written into African constitutions. Despite the overwhelming approval of the American president's message, disputed, less than democratic elections took place most recently in Gabon and earlier this year in Uganda. European Union election observers report both the re-election of President Yoweri Museveni over opposition candidate Kisa Besigi and the vote in Gabon between incumbent President Ali Bongo and opposition candidate Jean Ping were lacking transparency. Edward Coogan is the European Union's chief elections observer in Uganda. I saw myself the remarkable commitment of Ugandans to participate in their electoral process. Regrettably, the Electoral Commission failed to communicate effectively steps. According to our assessment, Electoral Commission lacks independence, transparency, and the trust of the stakeholders. Mariah Gabrielle, head of the EU's electoral monitoring team in Gabon, praised the nation's voters. I would like to congratulate Gabonese voters who expressed their democratic will in a process which was handled with a lack of transparency. Supporters of both candidates in Gabon are claiming victory and fraud. The Electoral Commission says the incumbent has won in a close election. John Ping has called on President Bongo to acknowledge defeat and step down. Meanwhile, in Uganda, despite multiple accusations of voter fraud, ballot box interference, and media censorship, President Museveni remains in power. He has ruled the nation continuously for more than 30 years. I, Kiza Besigi, On May 11th, Dr. Besigi's Forum for Democratic Change Party declared him president one day before Museveni took the official presidential oath for the fifth time. Dr. Besigi has opposed and run against President Museveni four times in 2001, 2006, 2011, and again this year. Any swearing by Mr. Museveni is not a swearing by the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda because he has not won an election. Besigi has paid a heavy price for his determined opposition. He's been under house arrest, jailed, and beaten several times for what the government calls acts of treason and inciting the public. He was released on bail last month after months of detention following February's election. Dr. Besigi recently traveled to the United Kingdom and is now in the United States 
where he is primarily engaging and encouraging the diaspora to continue supporting the struggle for democracy in Uganda. Africa's democratic progress is also at risk when leaders refuse to step aside when their terms end. Now, but the law is the law. And, and no one person is above the law, not even the president. Paul Sisko, VOA News, Washington. Thanks, Paul, for that interesting report. Uh, we expect to be joined here in our Washington studios by a distinguished guest called Colonel Dr. Chiza Vesije, a former Ugandan presidential candidate who we gather is stuck in the Washington in traffic. And we're also expected to be joined uh, via Skype from the Ugandan southwestern town of Mbarara. A major General Kahinda Otafire, retired but certainly not tired, who is the current Ugandan Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. But before we do that, of course, uh, we do have uh, our own reliable uh, reporter here by the name Peter Kilote, host of the weekend, of course, uh, Nightline, of, uh, Nightline Africa program. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Peter Kilote. You're welcome, Shaka. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Terrific. Wonderful. But of course, uh, not so much terrific, especially given that uh, we did lose uh, a very good man by the name Bob Long, of course, you know that. Right. Yeah. Well, later in the program, we will give you, the audience, a chance to call and talk with our guests. The number to call is 202-619-3111. Your country record is one. Now, Peter, I know that uh, you obviously have been monitoring the uh, weekend elections in Gabon. Right. What is the latest update so far? Well, the latest update is that uh, there seem to be some sporadic violence in parts of the capital uh, following the announcement of the final results by the Minister of Interior in Gabon. And President Ali Bongo Odimba um, won with 1.57% of the vote which is less than 6,000% because his actual figure was 49.80 and Jean-Ping, his main challenger, uh, came in second with 48.23 of the total vote cast. So it was narrow, 1.57, 5,594 votes. Very narrow, the most competitive so far in Gabon. Very interesting. Uh, to what extent would you say that uh, the electoral process was free, fair and credible? Well, I spoke with uh, Igor Siman, who is a, uh, one of the special advisors of... Uh, 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 Bongo, and he told me the election was free despite the assessment of the European Union poll observer mission that says the election lacked transparency. Mm -hmm. He said uh, they are very proud to accept the invitation of uh, uh, the European Union to come and monitor the election. And one of the reasons why they invited the European Union to monitor the election was one, to monitor and to help the democratic process and journey that Gabon has taken so far, and that it wasn't only the European Union poll observers who came to monitor in that you have the African Union, you have the Central African uh, monitoring group and other um, poll monitoring groups from all around the world and that if it's only the European Union that has concluded that the election lacked transparency, others are saying that it has credibility, it was transparent, it was free, fair and credible. That is what he told me. Interesting, of course, uh, it was an election that uh, was simply too close to call uh, others might, in fact, call it a sort of uh, uh, political photo finish, if you will. Well, th so, so it, it was. And um, uh, one of the key uh, concern of the opposition, particularly, is with the ethnic vote. And the ethnic vote, you had an area known as, or a province known as Hotogui, where the president comes from um, with his ethnic Teke, uh, ethnic group, yes. Hmm. And they had a, a percentage of about 98.97%, which approximately means every single one of those who registered to vote there voted. And one of their major concerns was that it was too calculated and usually statistically uh, very difficult to achieve that higher number. So Ping is calling for a total recount of the vote, particularly in those regions, because he believed that once the audit is done, Hotogwe might not necessarily go to the president in that large amount, and that could bring, the, uh, bring him 
have to win the presidential election. By the way, he called on uh, Odimba to step down and that he guarantees his freedom and there will be no witch hunting and all that. But it remains to be seen if he will be taken <laughs> up on that. V very interesting, Peter. But uh, on the other hand, one might also say that uh, Gabonese are very sophisticated in mm -hmm. the sense that uh, they are sincerely not necessarily loyal to their ethnic communities because the last time I checked, uh, Peter, Jean Ping, his father, is Chinese. Indeed. Indeed. However, he also has a, a mother who is a Gabonese, and they believe that he did enough just to defeat uh, Bongo because he thought that uh, Bongo has effectively not been good at, one, uniting the country despite repeated promises, and that all, despite all the country's wealth, he's not be able to transform it. Now, sadly, to, well, the strangest thing is that Ali Bongo ran on a change mandate, and he was the incumbent president. Very interesting, very, very interesting. interesting. I gather, Peter, that uh, we are being joined by the Ugandan Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs uh, all the way via Skype from uh, the Ugandan southwestern town of Mbarara. Good evening, uh, Major General Kahinda Otafiri. Good evening, uh, Mr. Shakasari. Well, I have to say that uh, it is always a pleasure, uh, General Otafire, uh, for me to get the opportunity to interact with you. Thank you very much. I'm also pleased to have, to have to interact with you. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, your fellow panelist, uh, Colonel Dr. Chiza Vesije, is apparently stuck uh, in the Washington traffic, uh, but we hope that uh, he will be joining us momentarily. Well, so they also have traffic in Washington. Yes, it was in We sometimes, in fact, have what you would call the mother of all traffic jams. <laughs> oh. How are I you? I guess you get there. Eh? How is Mbarara? Mbarara is fine. It used to be uh, a great town uh, when I was a young man and uh, doing a bit of my service around that particular area. Yes. And uh, I don't know whether you are aware of the fact that uh, we are obviously talking about uh, democracy and the rule of law in Uganda. Uh, my first question to you would be, uh, if you were, for example, uh, to make an assessment on the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest uh, score and 0 being the lowest, how would you rate democracy in Uganda from your vantage point? Well, Mr. Sasaka, as you know, I'm the steward of uh, constitutionalism and rule of law in Uganda. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I can't be judged in my own case. But surely you have heard a yes, lot of. Work. Go ahead. And let the, those observers, judges, I really don't want to blow my own trumpet. What let, the, let the people, the observers and the voters in Uganda judge our performance. What about uh, the issue of human rights? Well, you are very conversant with the, our history. You know where we come from. You know how much we tried our level best to observe human rights. But uh, in the performance of our duties, we use the tools we have on hand. That's the population, the people, the manpower we have. Changing manpower from uh, a fascist and neo-fascist attitude to acceptance of uh, an observance of human, uh, human rights is a process. It does not happen overnight. We are doing our level best, and it with a few uh, pitfalls here and there. But I would say, like uh, Winter we said, our situation is horrendous. No, it's not. We've done our very best. Terrific. Uh, so basically what you are saying here, frankly, is that uh, when it comes to the issue of human rights, uh, it's not a matter of being an incident, uh, nor an event. It is a process. It's not a process. 
These are incidents that occur, and uh, the incidents are a result of human failure. There are areas where sometimes the security forces have made mistakes, and we will provide the security forces accordingly. We don't uh, condone excesses. I will record for speaking out against the mistakes. Nonetheless, mistakes are human. There is no moving vehicle that does not raise dust. Only stationary vehicles don't raise dust. And when you take cognizance of our history, then you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Sakurashari. I see, I see. Very good, very good. You are tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of a discussion in a moment. Uh, I think that we do have a wrong page. Now we'll pause for a short break and uh, we would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now on the social networking website Twitter and we are tweeting live. Follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka and join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag Uganda Democracy. And we are still on Facebook. Just enter the keyword, Straight Talk Africa. Become a fan and connect with other friends of the Voice of America. We'll be right back with you, so please, don't go away. I wanted to present music and a side of American culture that is most important to me, that is a part of who I am. They're going to get some incredible performances. That's one of the things I love, bringing these artists in so you can get to see them do what they do. It's soul music, and that's what music is. It's that which comes from the soul. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. Country Code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question. Keep your comment brief and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizu, you what? And of course, this is Straight Talk Africa coming to you live from Washington. And here, of course, uh, I have to say frankly that uh, we are profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled. Uh, once again, of course, to have the opportunity to host you, Colonel Dr. Chiza Besije, a former Ugandan presidential candidate, not once, not twice, not three times. <laughs> Guess what? Four times. <laughs> Thank you, it's always my pleasure to be here, and uh, I have been here for quite a while. Uh, it's so funny that uh, whenever I'm here, I'm always in some kind of trouble. Really? I was first here in 2001. That is after correct. the first time I contested. And as you know, I had just run away yes, of from uh, Uganda then. Well, I didn't run away this time, but I am a prisoner. You are a prisoner. I'm on way out on bail. Well? And I'm glad to be here. You are a prisoner. What about uh, the rest of the Ugandan people? Are they free? No, frankly not. In fact, when I was in prison, um, which uh, uh, I was until about a month ago, uh, people who came to see me uh, were telling me that uh, the trending T-shirts in town then was that we are all prisoners. Really? And that's what they were telling me, that uh, there was no difference between me who was inside and them who were outside. So that is unfortunately the situation in our country, I'm afraid. It's, it's very interesting because, you know, there is a, a very great and distinguished uh, uh, political prisoner who spent 27 and a half years uh, under the apartheid conditions. I remember that once he said uh, they negotiated his release, actually. At one point, they said, you know what? You are free to go back to Soweto. And he said, you know what? There's no way I can leave prison to go and yeah, live in a larger prison. Until, of course, uh, everything is negotiated to the extent that we actually get real democracy. And by the way, Shaka, talking about prison, you see, it is actually not a matter of just Uganda. I think what our people on the continent ought to realize 
is that we are simply going through a very painful decolonization process. Because frankly, all citizens of Africa lost citizenship when we were colonized. But when we were colonized, we were not citizens, we were subjects. Yes, well, we were at least, uh, we were in different states of, uh, you know, ownership mm -hmm. of our areas, of our territories where we lived. Mm -hmm. Some were total subjects, some were not. Mm -hmm. some, uh, and I know, you know, the, the, the Bachiga, where you come from, were not entirely subjects, as, no. you, as you know. They claim so, to have been free. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uniformly, even those who were making some of us subjects were also made subjects. So everybody on the continent became a subject. Correct. Whether you were a king, whether you were a commoner, mm -hmm. we all became mm -hmm. subjects of different uh, capitals outside Africa. And that situation, frankly, hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. We only have different uh, uh, people in charge, but the situation remains exactly the same. Citizens have no power, have no rights, don't make, don't, are not really involved in decision making. And um, they, they, uh, uh, they, 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 they live at the pleasure of those who are supposed to be their leaders. And that is the, the thing that must change. And unless it changes, mm. talking about these elections is talking about something that, uh, you know, cannot happen. You cannot have, you know, a, 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 someone with absolute authority, absolute power, organizing an election to remove, to take away that power from him. Very interesting. It will not happen. Uh, why did you go to the bush back in 1981? I thought you well, actually argued that... Uh, Someone had stolen an election. Yes. And that, in fact, your justification was to restore what you characterized as merit party democracy. Yes. So, what happened? You now have merit party democracy in Uganda. Well, what happened is actually that we succeeded. Mm -hmm. We uh, indeed took up arms, fought, and removed uh, a regime that we uh, believed had usurped the power of the people. Mm -hmm. What clearly failed was the intention we had mm -hmm. of transferring power back to its, legitimate, uh, to its legitimate place, the people of Uganda. Uh, and that, uh, I'm afraid, will remain the case. Because, as you know, Uganda is a very classical case, where since independence, no leader has ever handed over power peacefully to another leader. That's true. So the only method of transferring power is guns. And that is uh, very, uh, you know, in instructive because it means that power resides in the guns. You need guns to take power from these guns and it goes to different guns, but it doesn't go to the people. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Major General Kahindo Tafide, are you there? Yes, I am, and I'm listening. What about you, my good brother? You, in fact, too, went to the bush. They called it well yes. back in 1981. To do what? Yes, I did. What did you go to the bush to do? I went to the bush to do transformation. <laughs> and uh, as far as I'm concerned, the question was not elections. The question was committing class suicide in order to liberate the people of Uganda yeah. mentally, physically, economically. Speak a little louder, I can't hear you well. I'm afraid, I'm afraid we are having transmission problems uh, via the Skype. Uh, I frankly don't seem to be understanding what you are saying. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I hear you very clearly. Yes, um, I was asking you what was the justification for going to the bush? Wasn't it to restore what you characterize as a merit party democracy? And in fact, no, when, hasn't the Ugandan president at one time said, I brought you democracy? When I went to the bush, mine was not what you think. I didn't romanticize struggle. I committed class suicide in order to liberate our people mentally, physically, economically and socially. In the pursuit of this, 
Democracy was one aspect of liberation. I went to fight the neo-colonial state that had been left behind by the colonialism. I went to, to fight in order to end the slave mentality of aping what is not ours. And it's a painful, painstaking process. It takes time. Like I told you before, the tools we use to transform society in Uganda is the population. That population has had very history, trauma, tra trauma, traumatic history, and neocolonial orientation in many ways. Philosophically, psychologically, socially, economically, that's why we have problems with the leadership that helps what we think is best in other areas, especially the West. You are trying to compare two systems that are not congruent, that travel parallels. If America is a uh, democratic, how come black people are being gunned down in broad daylight by state authorities? And there is, there is apparent helplessness in stopping that phenomenon. I see. So my going to the bush was not about what you people call democracy. Mine was mental liberation, physical, physical, philosophical approach to the situation obtaining on the continent. And mine was not for Uganda only. Remember Shaka? I'm the global chairman of the Pan-African movement, the global chairman of the Pan-African movement. Mine is a quest that is greater than the African province of Uganda. I remember, of course, uh, you were a very good buddy of my friend, the late uh, Dr. Tajuddin Abdurrahim. Uh, is that correct? Yes, God bless his poor soul, his day. It's not only Tajuddin. Uh, I have rubbed shoulders with the late uh, Professor Abr Abrahman Babu, Karim Yusa, and many, many other Pan Africanists. Ours is an ideological struggle. It not sheer romanticism of democratic practice. We don't rom romanticize revolution, no. I see. We need it. I see. I think uh, your point is well made, uh, General Kahindo Tafide. Let me come back here in the studio, uh, Dr. VCJ. Uh, we're talking about uh, democracy, really, in Uganda and the rule of law. Uh, let's look at uh, a report card. You were not able to watch the package, but you were simply talking about uh, pretty much the status of what democracy is or may not be in Uganda. On the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest and 0 being the lowest, how would you rate democracy in the context of democracy and rule of law in Uganda, and why? Well, I wouldn't uh, uh, spend a lot of time trying to, you know, um, put a mark on that scale. But I think one just needs to look, and, um, you know, I'm happy that uh, my uh, brother and Tafiri has been very clear about what it was the struggle we engaged in had been about. Uh, you know, a question of uh, uh, Ugandans having a, ha having a stake in and dis making decisions that influence what goes on in the country is at the heart of. Uh, of all the things that he's talking about, you know, whether it's social, economic, whatever transformation, it must start with people having control over their country, having control over the institutions. So has that happened so far? Quite obviously not, and I'm sure he knows that. He knows that. Uh, you cannot, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, if he says he did not go to the bush because of an election in 19... 
80. 81. 81. Eight, 81. Or the election of 90, following 90, the election 80. of 1980. Mm. Then, quite obviously, uh, uh, he should have gone to the bush even much, much earlier. But the thing is that uh, after independence, there was hope that indeed people would uh, exercise the power that had been taken away from them. In any case, they had more or less been given uh, the, the, the view that they could elect their leaders. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, what has been happening now, and I'm sure Ndugu Otafire knows, that the, uh, the citizens whom he has been seeing being beaten at will by people who are supposed to protect them, uh, if those are the owners of the country that you are, you know, clobbering and uh, sometimes shooting wantonly and killing, are the ones who are supposed to be making decisions and managing institutions of their country. It's, it's, it's a joke. So what if somebody says perhaps in fact uh, the political elite in Uganda may in fact have accomplished that goal? Accomplished the goal of? The goal that, uh, which was supposed of course uh, to reflect the deliberation of the ordinary Ugandan citizens. Of course, Ugandan of course. What, what happened, and this is the point that, uh, a central point behind the processes in Africa, because mark you, all the conflicts in Africa are internal conflicts. Well, unfortunately, are, basically, there is no democracy in Studio 52. If the producer says you go, you have to go just like a good soldier. You are tuned into Straight Talk Africa. We have more of a discussion in a moment, but first, here is Maria Majaro. Take it away, Maria. Well, thanks, Shaka. Still to come, we'll reveal some of the feedback we've received from our audience through social media. Stay with us. So this is Today's youth are not just the next generation of African leaders. They are today's leaders. And this is the time to invest in them. Today, not tomorrow. So let's connect. Let's engage with each other on issues that will transform our societies. Innovation, leadership, entrepreneurship, things that you're doing to move the continent forward to make you the greatest generation that Africa has known. It's up front every Wednesday, 1730 UTC, right here on The Voice of America. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. Call us now with your questions and comments. The number is 202-619-3111 and the U.S. country code is 1. Call us direct and we'll call you right back. Remember to turn down the volume on your radio or television and keep your comments brief. Now back to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Esther Gizu, you what? And of course, you are welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, live from Washington. Once again, it's time to bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Mariama. Take it away again, Mariama. Well, thanks, Shaka. In February, President Yoweri Museveni extended his 30-year grip on power in Uganda despite a massive outcry from the opposition and some in the international community. Opposition leader Kisa Besigye, who's here today, we're happy to host him, and who's had countless arrests, insists he won the presidential election. According to the country's uh, official results, uh, Museveni won with over 60% of the votes. A country that doesn't have term limits, does have age limit, and Museveni, who's 71 right now, would technically not be qualified to run again in 2021. But that's a long way, and so much can happen between now and then. This leads us to our question of the week, which asks, what can be done to ensure that democratic principles are being upheld in Uganda? Well, starting off the conversation is one of our followers in Nigeria in our letter of the week. Yahya Ahmed Gumel from Jigawa in Nigeria writes, democratic principles can only be upheld in Uganda 
when Ugandans fully understand and take the ownership of their struggle for free and fair elections, good governance, and the rule of law. Ugandan civil society and democratic institutions should collaborate to rescue the nation from the firm grip from political demagogues whose words are never met with actions. Well, that was uh, Yahya Ahmed Gumel in Jigawa, Nigeria. Thanks again, uh, everyone, for using all our social media platform to communicate to us. Before we move on to more comments, just a quick reminder that we are tweeting live today. Just use the hashtag Uganda Democracy. And if you haven't yet, do follow us on Twitter. Speaking of it, let's go to a tweet uh, from Edgar Kawa, who writes... Most likely, the independent, in quotes, he put, uh, electoral commission will That's select right. for them, as it is usually That's the case right. in most African countries. Well, another tweet, um, this time from Emmanuel Kachele, points out that uh, democratic principles uh, in Uganda can only be upheld if Ugandans say no to dateless presidencies and nepotism. One final tweet uh, from uh, Peter Isaac says that better management of elections, uh, elections observers from United Nations and also country constitution be followed. Well, now to a comment uh, from a Facebook uh, follower this time. His name is uh, Mani Alcado Kasi from Panda, Tanzania, who writes, when I see Africa, I see no hope for democracy and tranquility. The only way to ensure the implementation of democratic principles, democratic principles rather in Uganda, is to be democratic. And that is the thing Africa and its incumbent leaders will not take into consideration. Voters are becoming poorer and the relatives of leaders are increasingly sharing the national cake. Well, that's quite a colorful comment here, Shaka and guests. What do you make of all these opinions uh, expressed by our audience? Very interesting. Uh, the good General Kahinda Otafide, your reaction to that, please. <clears throat> um, you see, where we defer is your definition of democracy. For quite a number of elite, of the elite in Africa, their view of democracy is elitist. It's periodic participation in elections. As far as I'm concerned, democracy is participation. All through, from top to bottom, especially at grassroots. I don't care who is president of Uganda. For as long as the LOC won, the LOC won, that local council won, determines how it does its work. The, the president supervises, superintends over a system. If it's democratic, it means the citizens are participating in day-to-day -day management of the affairs. When they are happy in their localities and communities, then the country will be stable. What is happening in Africa generally is contest for power and authority by the elite. by the elite. And that elitist view of democracy does not work well for, for this continent. Take care of the people. Take care of the people and the population will take care of itself. So when you say, uh, unless, you know, we manage our elections properly, we need, what about popular participation by the population on a daily basis in the, in the process? of managing their lives. So basically, if I heard you correctly, uh, General Kahindo Tafire, frankly, uh, you are comfortable with the, uh, perhaps, uh, the definition of democracy as being a government of some people, by some people, for some people, of which, of course, you are part of, the elite. No, 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 that's, that's your definition. That's not my definition. That's what the elite in Africa is trying to rein us into, they are trying to squeeze us into, well, that, that very definition. Some of us are saying, no, I democracy see. is order. Uh, ideologically, for me, democracy is 
the population managing its own affairs. I hear you. I hear you, General. I hear you. And uh, let's go back to Mariama for more audience reaction, please. Well, let's look at a Facebook uh, comment from Prince Nukula Herbert Wairagara Jr. I think I got his name all in. Uh, he's from Kampala, and he writes that Ugandans need to rise up and demand the respect of democratic principles because the current leadership does not seem to want to provide it. Let's take a look at another comment while we are there, uh, this time from uh, Goa Saspranik. Uh, from Monrovia in Liberia, who says that Uganda is a presidential republic in which the president of Uganda is both the head of state and head of government. There is a multi-party system. The executive <coughs> power is exercised by the government. The Ugandan president is elected by a popular vote for, five year, for a five-year term. These are all products of democracy. The head of state needs to uphold the things that I have outlined. Well, that's a very interesting uh, posting uh, from Goa. Uh, once again, uh, Shaka and guess your thoughts on this. Your reaction, uh, the good doctor. Well, um, first of all, uh, maybe to react to the last uh, comment about there being a, 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 a republic uh, with a president that is elected every five years. Yes, that's true. Um, but the question is, elected by who? You have periodic elections, don't you? Yes. And, uh, but what type of elections are they? You see, uh, these comments actually are very uh, good that they come out in respect of Uganda. Because the Ugandan leader now, mm. uh, I don't call him president because I don't think he is. Why? Because you become president through a process that he has not gone through. Uh, he became president uh, by using guns. He did not become president through an election. He became a president by waging war and taking the reins of power by force. But what about since 1996? Yes. And so he went to war precisely for the point you talked about, that elections were meaningless because there had been an election in which he had participated. And he said, this election is meaningless. The institutions are meaningless. Because if he, if, if he had respected, for example, parliament, that parliament can change the system, he would have gone to parliament. Parliament would have maybe carried out reforms. But the institutions, you see what we, what we are talking about, which is the point I made at the beginning, where power is controlled by a handful of people using the force of coercion. All institutions of state are controlled by individuals. And this is the, the, why the point uh, Mr. Otafire makes is redundant, because you cannot talk about citizens participating mm -hmm. when they don't control institutions. But she's because a they, they participate through what? She's a how, do they, how do those people, he calls, he calls the people in the villages, how do they control resources? But she's a who distributes the resources in the country? She's a messenger in 2005. Yes. The Ugandan government changed the constitution, essentially lifting term limits. Yes. Correct? Yes. Uh, and of course, going for what some would characterize as a presidential monarch. Yes. But when the president was taken task on that, President Museveni said he succumbed to pressure. So, which pressure must he have been talking about? Obviously, he must have been talking about the Ugandan people. Yes, but you see, if, the, if there was any kind of pressure from the Ugandan people, you would not need to use force to uh, keep the people down. Or to, or to facilitate the members of parliament in order to change uh, absolutely, the Absolutely, or to pay money to members of parliament, not only paying, but coercion, actually coercing others, because you remember they had to lift the rules, change the rules of parliament so that they could vote by show of hands. He could not trust that even after paying them, they could vote uh, secretly and, and, and do what, uh, what he wanted. I'm afraid uh, time is not our best ally, but we shall continue with the discussion. Thanks, Mariama, for bringing us this week's audience reaction. Well, that will do it uh, for today's uh, social media segment. Just a reminder that we appreciate all the feedback. 
whether it's in social media form or using other means to communicate to us, please keep them coming. If you are a new fan, just drop us a line at africatv at voanews.com. Once again, our email address is africatv at voanews.com. Or post your comment on our Facebook page. Just enter the keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Be sure to visit us online at voaafrica.com. Or you can join our YouTube channel. Sign up to VOA TV to Africa. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. Another reminder that the show is streaming live every Wednesday. Just go to the VOA Straight Talk Africa TV program page on our website or simply watch us live on your mobile device. Just download the VOA mobile app. Now, let's take a look at what's on tap for next week's program. Next week on Straight Talk Africa... Choosing the Hero, My Improbable Journey, and the Rise of Africa's First Woman President. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, the 2012 Nobel Peace Prize winner and president of Liberia, is a subject of a new book by Reva Levinson, an in-depth discussion on the life and career of Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is next week, right here on Straight Talk Africa. Welcome back, and today, of course, we are talking about democracy and rule of law in Uganda. Our distinguished guests are Dr. Chiza Besije, a former Ugandan presidential candidate, and retired Major General Kahinda Otafire, the Ugandan Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. He joins us via Skype from the Ugandan southwestern town of Barara. Gentlemen, I have to say that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled I have the opportunity to host the two of you on Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much. Okay. You're most welcome. Uh, let me come to you, uh, General. Uh, General Kahinda Otafire, uh, let me ask you this question. As a Minister of Justice, how do you respond to critics and especially human rights groups, both local and international, who accuse the government for governing a society that suffers from what do they characterize as a deficit, a deficit of social economic justice? Well, first of all, I don't understand what they're trying to tell me. I happen to be Minister Responsible for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, and a therefore steward of observers of human rights human rights, and indeed, I have the Uganda Human Rights Commission within the ministry, and I get feedback from what transpires within the country. Like I said in the beginning, our society has been traumatized. It's come through a painful process of change. We as a government are doing our level best to ensure observance of human rights. I didn't say we are 100%. Okay, no. And I don't know how many societies on earth in this planet can claim to be 100%. If the society is emulated, we are perfect. There wouldn't be any Guantanamo's. Yes. There wouldn't be any uh, outcries in the, in the certain places I don't want to talk about. The fact that these situations arise means that everybody in the first of observance of human rights is dictated Two, by what we call real politics, the, the objective conditions obtaining on the ground and in the country. Take, for example, we have an election. It's conducted by the Electoral Commission. The election is called, concluded. The Electoral Commission says 
President Museven has won. An, election, an electoral my, commission that, of course, uh, critics say my, is and brother, partisan. And my good brother, Dr. Chiza Vesige, says, no, he didn't win. He says we are going to have a program of defiance. Of course, he's entitled to demonstration. He's entitled to manifestation. He's Thank entitled you. to... Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, General Tafia. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the time happens not to be our best ally. I have to go to the lifeline of the show, which are the telephone callers. Let me go to Ghana. Good evening, Tafa. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Hello, good evening, Shaka. Terrific. How are you? I'm great, Shaka. What about you, sir? Well, what is your question, Tafa? Shaka, uh, I have a... Uh few comments to make about uh, your guest. You have a minute. You have a minute, Tafa. A minute, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me comment uh, Dr. Kira Bessie, the one of the few opposition leaders I have a lot of respect for. Because considering the, the nature of the Ugandan leader, we all know that Uganda is no democracy. Uh, uh, and you have somebody like him fighting for democracy. We are here. We should continue until the Ugandan people are free. Because when you look at what's happening in Uganda, Uganda has a very good people, intellectuals like you people. But your president is embarrassing Uganda and the Africa as a whole. So I will appeal to him, he should continue. Africa is behind him. We are behind him. We we'll continue to pray for him. Go to Africa number one tyrant dictator who will move in power. Have a good evening, Shaka. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go to Suleiman in South Africa. Good evening, Suleiman. You're most welcome to Straight Talk Africa. Sullivan, are you there? Are you there, Sullivan? I'm afraid. Are you? I'm afraid I cannot hear Sullivan. What about Eamon from Uganda? And the kind of Dr. Kizanis this throughout the the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs in Uganda. This is Eamon Kanyanta from Uganda. I patiently I would like also to talk about uh, the issue of you know about the human rights and democracy in Uganda. Of course, if uh, we had elections in Trump, what had happened uh, it is it shows that uh if independent up to now we have never practiced democracy whereby uh, kind of Dr. Kizan, who is trying to make his first attempt to the Ugandan State House, has been arrested for several times. So I think uh, Uganda and the entire Africa, we have a problem of an human rights. Because when we find that some people are treated like criminals, are treated like people who cannot even uh, live in their country, so I think uh, it is a problem in Uganda. We need to have a, a great prayer for Uganda under the democracy. Thank you. Thank you. I think your point is well made. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Colonel uh, Dr. Chiza Besije. Uh, you stated before February 2016, general elections, that uh, you wouldn't participate in any poll if fundamental electoral reforms hadn't been carried out. Why did you participate in an exercise that you knew was flawed? Yes, because as I told you, the struggle at hand is really not uh, for choosing a leader. The struggle at hand is really a, a liberation struggle, uh, a struggle to change power, distribute power, to take power from the hands of few to the hands of the majority. And that struggle can be uh, advanced through different uh, processes. An election can be a good opportunity. That's why in the last election we said we are going this election to win not just by campaigning and, and voting, campaign via defiance. but to win by defiance. And what we mean by defiance is that the people of you, we, are, we awaken the people of Uganda to do what they need to do to defy the injustice that is there, including the injustices in the election, because the election is patently unjust. The, the, the electoral commission that organizes it is a walking stick of Mr. Museveni. The security institutions that are supposed to ensure uh, security and stability are enforcers of uh, Mr. Museveni's uh, will and so on and so forth. So 
we, we, we had to defy all these in order to win. And let me... But don't you remember the words of Nobel laureate Albert Einstein who once said that if you keep doing the same thing yes. over and over again, yes. expecting different results, yes. and it the, must be a sort of ha insanity. Happily, it cannot be the same thing because the results are different. How are they different? Let me tell you, and all our listeners and viewers Time out there... Time is not there, a best salary, Mr. Besige. Go ahead. Uganda is different now. The people of Uganda are awake. And that is why, indeed, in the last election, we won by defiance. What may not be known to people who are outside Uganda is that this time around, Mr. Museven did not steal the vote. He used the guns to overthrow the will of the people of Uganda. We have evidence still in my possession and which we have been demanding for an opportunity to present to the public in an internationally supervised audit evidence to show that we won the election by 52 percent we have that evidence in hand unfortunately and happily the people of uganda are saying we shall not allow mr museveni to usurp our power this time unfortunately and and, and i am confident that uh, mr museveni may have sown himself in but he's not going to uh, to, to, to exert his will as he has been doing before over our people. Our people are awake. All those who are listening know that Uganda is going to be a trailblazer for actually what happens in people re regaining their power that they lost very many years ago. You know, I would have liked to ask uh, a question to the Ugandan minister, but unfortunately, time is not our best ally. I was wondering if there is such a thing as rule of law, why is it that often some police officers, when they arrest some victims, they actually say they're acting on orders from above, not the law of the land. But unfortunately, time is not our best ally. And for that, I would like to say, before we go, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the passing of my friend and very colleague, Bob Long, a giant television journalist and mentor who died last weekend. Bob, affectionately known to some of us, as Captain Bob served in the U.S. Marines before becoming a journalist of not. I shall always remember him for having taught and encouraged me to be the best broadcast journalist that I could be by remaining authentically the kid from Kavali, southwestern Uganda. Our players go to his family and may his soul rest in eternal peace. On that note, thanks to our distinguished guests, Dr. Chiza Besije, a former Ugandan presidential candidate and retired Major General Kahinda Otafire, the Ugandan Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. He joined us live via Skype from the Ugandan southwestern town of Mbarara. Thanks to our affiliate stations, along with our viewers and listeners, we thank you for tuning in. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next. And tomorrow morning, it's the Daybreak Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning in to Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not better, Uganda. And please remember to keep the African hopes alive.